Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is Castro. Uh, I wanted to create this video to answer a few questions that uh, some people have been asking me on social media about uh, an indicator holder uh, that I've been using uh, in the previous photos and videos that I've been posting. Um, so this is it. This is the box um, and uh, I will show you what it does and where it's actually used for. Let me just open the box for you. Right. So this is the device, right? Uh, so let me bring the camera a bit closer and I can show you its features. Okay. Um, so first things first, I actually did not design um, this device. This is um, this was done firstly by um, a fellow YouTuber. Uh, his channel's name is Shop and Math, and uh, I will link uh, to his video, to his original video, um, where he actually explains far better than I will be doing it today about this device and how it works. So. Uh, I would suggest to pause this video, go and watch that one and then come back uh, because I've done some modification to his design. So it's better for you to watch the original first. Right, with that said, um, with this device, uh, you can measure squareness or perpendicularity. So if you want to check with, uh, for example, uh, what is the the squareness between these two faces of this part, for instance, where it's been ground, uh, both these faces, to a very high squareness value, but you want to measure how much that is, you will be using a device like this. Now you can get away with using a, a surface gauge and uh, perhaps a pin uh, or a precision pin, uh, which, which is something that I used to do before having this. Uh, but this is a more dedicated and easier setup of doing that. Um, so how the device works. So firstly, uh, we've got a three point uh, contact system. Uh, I've lapped these three uh, faces or one of my friends, uh, he's done it. So these faces are pretty flat, so it will not rock and move when you are using it on a precision granite surface. Um, <clears throat> the other enhancements that I've done um, to the original design, firstly is uh, the original design that you can see on the Shop and Math channel it's all 3D printed, uh, but here, instead of using um, 3D printed uh, guides, uh, we've used actually uh, brass bushings that have, uh, they've been ground so they can match uh, the, uh, the diameter of these two shafts. And we've also wanted to support this top end. You can just pull, uh, easily pull this off, but it's better to support it from the top as well. And uh, for holding uh, the whole thing in place, because you can adjust the, the level of this, um, it's because of those bushings that it moves a little bit stiffer. Um, we've used a clamp system. So there is a, a ring with a chuck and a bolt. And this, well, you, when you twist this, then this whole thing gets clamped. Then you've got uh, an indicator holder. Uh, so your indicator will go in here and then you've got a fine adjust screw in here. So you can adjust uh, the position of the tip of the indicator. Um, the other thing that we've done is uh, for this uh, sort of lever or hinge, uh, if you like, um, we've added another spring uh, mechanism as well. So in order to remove any play or backlash in sort of in this um, direction, if you like, we've ground two uh, washers. So these you, uh, basically create a, a, uh, a bearing surface and then we're pushing it with a spring from the other side. Uh, so it will not have any plays like that. 
and then any place like that is eliminated by another spring down here and then obviously you've got your screw that uh, fine adjusts this from the top all right um then in the front you've got this big uh, washer which is a, a protruding uh, surface and we uh, made this using a wire cut edm and then we've got two other washers in the back with protruding washers as well if you want to check uh, sort of parallelism with this tool as well it is not um, it is not really designed for that but you can get away with using uh, using it that way Right, with, with all that said, uh, and all the adjustments that we've uh, done to the original design, let us uh, let me show you how the whole thing works. Obviously, as I said, it's better to watch the original video first. So, what I have here is a precision granite surface. This is, uh, this is quite a flat surface. Uh, I've got a test certification for it and uh, I think the 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 flatness of this plate, uh, which is particularly, uh, which is uh, this this is quite actually new, is about um, 0.15 micron. So it's it's got sub micron flatness uh, accuracy. Then I've got a master square, which is um, a grade double zero, which is again pretty pretty accurate. And this has a, a squareness better than uh, 1.5 micron across this whole length. So for shorter lengths, it would be uh, a lot more accurate, right? Um, and I've, I've tested that and it's pretty accurate. Uh, I think up to here, it's, it's less than half a micron, something like that. Um, so what, you'd, what you would do is you would take your granite, uh, you can actually get away without having something like a master square as well and I will tell you how to do it um, but in in this case I've got this uh, which makes life a lot easier so what you would do is um, let me just play with that a little bit so you would bring your your master square like that until it touches the washer that you've got and not the tip of the indicator then what you would do is you start dialing in until the tip of the indicator start to move i'll just do that right okay so i'll bring that to somewhere around here then what you would do is you roll this like that until you find the high point. So in this case, uh, let me just adjust it like so. And I'll bring it to zero, right? Okay. A little bit to the right. This is a one micron uh, indicator, so it can be a little bit tricky to, if you want to bring it to a, a specific number. Right. So my high point is at 10 micron. I don't want to play with it. Uh, it takes time. But let's say the high point is 10 microns, right? <clears throat> so now that I've got that, you rock it back and forth a couple of times. Well, it's actually about a little bit more than 10. Let's see, 12, 14, 14 seems to be, oh, actually 15 seems to be the high point. Okay, so let's say the 15 micron mark is the high point. Let me see if I can play with that a little bit. As I said, it's a pretty, uh, pretty sensitive indicator. a little bit like that okay 15 is the high point right okay bear that in mind 15 now we remove this put it to the side then what we will do is we bring our part in now let's say we want to measure the squareness of this face to this face so you position your part like that 
like so. Then you bring your dot your dial indicator your 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 setup your holder here and then you will sort of start from an angle and you move in until that washer hits the part like that and then you start rolling it you roll until you reach the high point right i roll back okay now the high point that I'm reading is five microns, okay? So that means the squareness of this part is 10 microns. So because when we calibrated, it was on um, 15 microns. Now it's reading five microns. Therefore, it's off by 10 microns. Obviously, as I said, that's got an accuracy to it. So that's... that's uh, that's not better than that's around uh, one micron squareness on this uh, particular uh, gauge uh, or, or, or uh, granite piece that I have. Um, so you have to take that into account as well. But uh, it's safe to say that it's it's around uh, 10 micron plus minus one micron, something like that. And that's how you measure squareness with this device. Um, we've added a, a piece uh, of um, just a piece of steel into this to increase its weight so it won't wobble around. Now, is it perfect? Mm, no, not really, because, for example, uh, when we are when we are measuring something like this, uh, because it's all 3D printed, if you put some pressure in here, for example, you can move the indicator by like one or two microns. But, you know, for some people, that's 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 more than enough one or two microns but if you want to uh, sort of read accurate measurements from this you can hold it from the uh, the actual uh, seating points um, and not from the middle or from this uh, front face which is also another uh, sort of seating point but overall it does the job i think it's a it's a good design and uh, there are ways to improve it of course but um, from what we did, I think this is a, a good outcome. Obviously, you can have uh, part, you can read parts that are quite long with it. I think we've increased uh, the height from the original um, design, and uh, yeah, that's about it really. It's a cute little uh, indicator holder for reading squareness uh, accurately and repeatedly. One thing before I leave you. Uh, I said that if you have, uh, if you don't have any um, master squares like that, what you can do is um, you can use any any part like a one two three block or or anything like that. Uh, in here, for example, I will use the same thing. You can take a measurement from this side of anything. It doesn't have to be accurate. You just take a measurement from this side and take a measurement from the other side. What needs to be accurate is that these two faces must be parallel. So if you've got a one, two, three block and then you skim the top face and the bottom face on a on a surface grinder, that's that's what you need. Uh, then what you will do is you read from one side and then you read from the other side and then you just divide that by half. So you know, for example, this face is two micron that way and this one is two micron this way. So you can then measure the, you can then find the exact midpoint and then you zero your DTI to that midpoint and then Bob's your uncle. Uh, so you don't need to have something like this. You can uh, get away with something that's got two parallel faces and uh, you can then measure squareness with it. Uh, but yeah, if you liked uh, this, uh, this little setup, uh, please uh, like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have any questions, comment down below and I'll hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers.